Jen. How are you? I am great. How are you? Good. I have Grant with me, my Hi, new tiny baby. Grant. Oh, how <laughs> precious. So how old is Grant? Grant is 11 weeks old um, on Monday. So. Love it. Well, you're still glowing. You look beautiful. Thank you. Thank yes. you. So Grant, my, Grant is joining us, and he might join us um, even more actively. Yes. We'll just see. Does it, we'll just see. We'll just see what, what happens. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for this idea. I love your passion for pelvic health. And could you just tell our audience a little bit about yourself and your background? Yes. So um, I am a pelvic floor physical therapist. I've been treating in pelvic health for about six years. Um, and I treat a mixed caseload of orthopedics, but mostly pelvic health. And um, I live in Austin, Texas. Yes, awesome. And we actually worked together briefly for a, for a little while, a few years back. Yeah. So uh, yeah. we've gone to a class together. And I think that you have the special honor of being one of two people that have dry needled my pelvic floor. <laughs> yes, yes. That was Ooh, that a was good a experience for everybody. <laughs> I don't really want to do it again, but if I had pelvic pain, that is a good option, you know. I yes, think. absolutely. So it's yes. a good tool to have in your toolbox. Maybe we have to do another uh, Instagram live on that one. I think that a lot of people probably have a lot of thoughts and questions about what that would entail. I uh, know. Just for anybody that is watching, they're very, very tiny, tiny needles, and they... Um, well, again, we that's not what this is about. So let me stay on topic, and we'll address that another day. If you have any questions, DM us. All right, so we are talking about pregnancy and pelvic girdle pain. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about it. What is pregnancy-related pelvic girdle pain? So pregnancy-related pelvic girdle pain is any pain, and I brought my little, yes. I love this little thing. Good. Um, Anything in and around your pelvic bones, um, and it's in the peripartum area, so it can be, oh, yes, you've got the, the, the real thing here. Yeah, so it can be in the pubic bone there, the pubic symphysis. It can be along the sacrum or um, sacroiliac joint, anywhere along the pelvic girdle, and it can be during pregnancy. It can be after pregnancy, uh, anywhere in the year postpartum period is all considered pregnancy related. Okay. That's good to know. I didn't realize that about the postpartum period. So good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how prevalent in it? How, how prevalent is it? How many people get pregnancy related pelvic girdle pain? That's oh, a mouthful, is... by the way, if you want to try to say it fast. <laughs> I, know. I know. I was reading my notes last night and I was like, that's a lot of words. So basically we're seeing ranges that go from six percent and upward, but around 20% of patients who are people who are pregnant or go into the postpartum period get this PRPG or pregnancy-related pelvic girdle pain. So it's wow. pretty prevalent. Mm -hmm. uh, so what should I do if I have it? So the big thing, if you have it, is I think the best thing to do is talk to your provider, right? So whoever you're trusting to manage your postpartum and pregnancy care, talk to them about it because they have heard many people complain of these issues. And often what you'll hear when you talk to your providers is that's so very, very common. And unfortunately, a lot of our providers would say, you know what, the best cure for that is giving birth. And sometimes, I knew often, it. <laughs> that's not an option. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. So, yes. Don't so, just, absolutely. You don't have to just live with it. Exactly. So, um, I, I just, when I was pregnant with Grant, had pregnancy related pelvic girdle pain. Um, and I was able to kind of like advocate for myself. But those of you who are watching this can also advocate for yourself or your clients and your patients and basically say that, you know, Pelvic floor PT or PTs that are used to working with this patient population can really help improve your quality of life. You don't really? have, like, I had to stop working because my pain was so bad. And you're a pelvic therapist. I yes. am. I'm a, I'm a pelvic floor therapist. So I have the luxury of having people that I know that can treat me, but I had to um, stop working because I just, my 
my coworkers were wheeling me around in a chair and I was using a rolling walker to walk around my house. Yeah. Wow. And that was, uh, that was with this pregnancy. And that was with this pregnancy. And that's actually, we're, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but a lot of people say like, well, what, how, how would I know if, if I'm at risk for pregnancy related pelvic girdle pain? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately we don't really have an idea of who is and who isn't at risk. One thing that can increase your risk of having this is if you had pregnancy related <laughs> pelvic girdle pain with a previous pregnancy. So um, if you had pelvic girdle pain before in a previous pregnancy, then you have an increased risk of having it for subsequent pregnancy. Mm. So, I skipped a question here. So what are the oh. symptoms? Okay, that's yeah, great. What are the, so, mm -hmm. and, and so just break it down as simply as we can. For, so there'll perfect. be therapists that are watching and, and healthcare yeah. providers, but a lot of people aren't. Yeah, so basically... The term, that mouthful, is it encompasses a lot of different parts of your pelvic bone, right? So if you have any pain in, like, your tailbone area, um, in and around, like, the top of your butt, or any pain in the front of your pelvis, like in your pubic bone, and sometimes even down the thigh, you can have some pain down and around your thigh, Sometimes you can just have low back pain. Um, sometimes the pain can be sharp. Yep, yep, around your thigh. Yep. So really, if you really think about, Janice, if you can just, like, go up above the iliac crest mm -hmm. and then down to the base of the of the femur that you have there, any pain around that whole area. From here it's, to here. <laughs> exactly. So any pain that's in and around that area, basically – is um, considered pregnancy-related pelvic girdle pain if you are pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so um, often, luckily, we don't have to figure it out ourselves. So that's why I encourage you to talk to your providers about it. And if you get kind of a term of like, well, it'll get better when you're, you know, one week postpartum, then bas basically I would encourage you to say, like, I've read that PT can really be helpful. Do you think I could go and at least get an assessment from a physical therapist okay. and see if there's something that can be done? Because we want to make it to term, right? We want right. to be able yeah. to continue. And have your quality have, of life. Exactly. I have a toddler. Most of us have, you know, friends and family. We want to continue working. We want to continue doing our daily life. We want to, you know, be with our families. We want to be able to do laundry, all those things. That <laughs> Eat, need. go to the bathroom. Exactly. So um, I would really encourage you, you don't have to be miserable. You don't yeah. have, to, like I couldn't walk at the, during my pregnancy related pelvic girdle pain. Um, and so that is what made me have to stop working. Um, the joke yeah. was, you don't want your therapist walking around in a wheelchair or in a walker. Yeah, what kind of message is this sending, right? Exactly. So um, that that's why I would really encourage you to just, like, talk to your providers. Sometimes it requires a little bit of encouragement because often providers find they don't know what to do with their patients, right? That's the feedback I've gotten. Well, I have patients that tell me they have pubic yeah. synthesis pain, but I don't know what to do. So we do. Yeah. We're lucky. I would also give a shout out to regular orthopedic therapists here and even, totally. even a, a general outpatient therapist because we have people. It's nice that in the bigger cities we have therapists that specialize. But exactly. we all learn about the musculoskeletal system in PT school. So totally. if you're a PT, maybe you're not specializing in that area. But as, if you're in a rural area or a vicinity where you just don't have a pelvic therapist, I would encourage you to go see a physical therapist. Um, and I want to give a shout out to those therapists, actually, because I work with so many great orthopedic therapists, and often they have a little worry about seeing a patient who's pregnant. And what I told my colleagues is, we're still people. Yeah. <laughs> we have the same <laughs> bones and joints as exactly. a non-pregnant person. I mean, I know that they want to be mindful of the the baby, which yes. they, you totally will be, but I don't want you to be fearful of seeing right. the pregnant patient. Right. They're really fun to treat, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I, I completely agree. 
And, and hopefully, if you don't have access to a pelvic therapist, we'll give you some simple self-help tips to hear that you can try on your own. Um, totally. But self-help frequently isn't enough, but it might be. So again, see a therapist and try these tips. All right. Yeah. So, and I think that's mm -hmm. a big thing because this particular issue encompasses so much that it is hard to do a one size fits all approach where, um, and often too, people are like, well, why is it so many joints? And it's because that uh, iliac crest in the pelvic basin really is kind of a unit. And yeah. so when you are pregnant or postpartum, those muscles and joints are shifting so much that you can have an issue in the back that affects the front. Right. So that's why exactly. self-help can be helpful, but sometimes it doesn't exactly tailor to what you might need. Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, so what types of treatments can be done? So what in physical therapy, what to expect is we would do a traditional orthopedic assessment, just like Janice was talking about. So we'll look at your back. We'll look at your hips. Um, uh, often with my patients who are pregnant, I'm not going to jump to do a pelvic floor assessment immediately right. unless there's some other issues coming up related to, like, uh, urinary leakage, those types of things, which can worsen during pregnancy. I think those of us who have carried pregnant pregnant bellies know yes, that that happens yes, yep. yes, yes. so um but i'm not going to jump to that initially so what you should expect is to move your body a little bit um i like to watch my patients do um regular activities of daily living so often that's like lifting up a child seat or squatting uh getting up on and off the floor um sometimes i'll have them get in and out of their car those kinds of things that tend to be the most irritating for yeah. my patients. See um, how they're doing those things. Exactly. And see if there's some way that I can intervene all day, every day by changing how you're doing that activity to decrease the number of times that you're having an, an irritation to the yeah. joint, basically. Exactly. Um, and, and we'll look at the strength of your muscles. But often for intervention, we do a lot of soft tissue mobilization. So some, sometimes we use big words, but that just means basically really pinpointed massage techniques. Mm -hmm. But also for our patients who are pregnant, as we all know, our, our bones are really movable, right? Exactly. So when we I do... wish this moved. You saw, did you, you saw that on my story, the, mm -hmm. that one pelvis that... that yes. Um, that was incredible. Too much movement, far too much. Movement. Too much. But, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing. This is like Goldilocks, right? You want enough movement, but not too much. You want to be just right. And so what's different about the pregnant pelvis versus the non-pregnant pelvis would be that we want it to be more mobile than the normal pelvis. So it's actually, your providers are right. It's quote unquote typical for them to be in pain because that pelvis is opening exactly mm -hmm. we wanted so, to expand this is a little disc there it's a cart it's cartilage that's actually not even mm -hmm. bone that's cartilage that connects yep. those two bones together mm -hmm. so there can be a tiny bit of movement in a normal non-pregnant pelvis but with a pregnant pelvis they they are a little bit more mobile so when we do specific joint techniques meaning like manual therapy hands-on moving the joints we, I use very gentle techniques, like mm -hmm. muscle energy techniques, mm -hmm. which are where you use the actual muscles in your legs to help kind of move the joints into a more optimal alignment. Yes. So I'm going to jump in one. I wish this pelvis could, could I, that you could see it actually rotate. But a lot of yeah. times we'll see this. So this, it's kind of like two halves. Mm -hmm. So it's the right and the left. So here's the right side. It goes from here all the way back to this joint here, the sacroiliac. And mm -hmm. that can actually rotate. Yep. And it may not rotate a lot. You may not even know that you're rotated. But imagine um, this is a weight-bearing structure, basically, right? All of this force and weight is coming through your pelvis. And if that pelvis is rotated, then mm -hmm. everything that you're doing all day long is in that asymmetrical position. And a simple either muscle energy technique or a hands-on technique to help mm -hmm. get that pelvis in yeah. an even position can make a huge difference. So, and you might talk about this, but a lot of times 
people have tried a belt and they'll say, oh, yes. the belt makes it worse. And yes. frequently, so think about that, that pelvis is rotated, right? Mm -hmm. If you're belting a pelvis that's asymmetrical, that's going to hurt. It's already yes. hurting. And now you're stabilizing and squishing it together. So that's one reason why if you've tried a belt and it didn't help, that it may, it may not have been effective. So, well, and that's exact. I was just about to say, basically, in my sessions, once we get you in a more optimal alignment, that's when I have my patients try the belt. So yes. we get you in a really nice, comfy position. We make sure the pelvis is, you know, it's going to move again, right? Yeah. We know that it's going to move again. That's the thing about pregnancy. So if we can utilize a belt to kind of help stabilize that joint, then, um, generally will identify if it's going to be helpful for that person once yeah. we've done all of our manual techniques to kind of get you in a more optimal alignment. Good. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so, so, and then you're sending people home with gentle exercises and yes. then tips and tricks about how to do things differently. Uh, yes. what would you say some of the most common tips and tricks are like, uh, do we want to stand on one leg a lot or getting in and out of the car? What's the best strategy, would you say? Yeah, so often with my patients who have this pregnancy-related pelvic girdle pain, it's one-legged activities that are really irritating for people. So um, getting in and out of the car is also irritating because you open your legs nice and wide to get into the car. So often what I have patients do is I, I have them keep their knees together, which is, you know, I'm sure our mothers would be very happy <laughs> to hear that, but basically almost like pretend like you're a mermaid. So you're like keeping your legs together as much as you can, lifting things so that you're one solid unit. Because as Janice was talking about, when you put weight on that one side, the muscles basically are trying to stabilize and then you're moving the other leg. That can cause some instability there and kind of tug those joints out of place. And it's painful, right? It's uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, so kind of trying to lift um, either toddlers or laundry tends to be a really big one for people. Um, getting laundry in and out and moving it around the house, trying to kind of keep it in the center of your body rather than on one side, as we tend to like to hold our babies on one side or hold our laundry basket on one side, trying to keep things in the middle of the body and then trying to be as much as a mermaid as you can be yeah. Yeah. in your day to day. I love mm -hmm. it. I love the mermaid. <laughs> I can see her walking around the house. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And sometimes even for my patients who, because I find that a lot of my patients have the most difficulty like, like rolling over in bed at nighttime, which is why I like the really soft belts. Like I like the Cerola belt or any kind of softer belt because you can sleep in it. It's nice and soft. There are some SI joint belts that are kind of have boning in it or they're a little more plasticky, mm -hmm. but I'll also have them like put a pillow between their knees and even like tie their knees together Ooh, in bed so that okay. they're like turning together as a unit. Getting into the practice because you don't know what you're doing when you're sleeping. Exactly. So as long as it's safe, but yeah. typically that'll be a, a big one that wakes people up as they roll over in bed and they wake up with this terrible, terrible, sharp pain. Um, and so the SI belt can be helpful, but also keeping your legs around the pillow, that can also help with your mermaid technique mm -hmm. at nighttime. I like that. Something I found really helpful with my first pregnancy, and now I do it I really since I started with my first pregnancy, I, I always do this if I, if I can, is when I'm on my side, I'll have a second pillow underneath my belly. So oh, that's just, so smart. It helps to support because if you think about it, if you're on your side, that belly is pulling you forward and it's kind of mm -hmm. rotating your pelvis and your back. So you're trying to be that mermaid with your legs and your hips mm -hmm. and your spine staying yep. as neutral as you can. So totally. that's an, a, a body pillow might be a great option because then you have the pillow between your knees and then it can mm -hmm. extend up underneath your belly too. Totally. So, mm -hmm. All right. So should I continue to exercise if I have symptoms? No pain, no gain. Is that what we're after? <laughs> <laughs> well, not necessarily. I mean, there's so many benefits of staying active during your pregnancy. Once so I would say active. absolutely. But as long as you see a provider, I think, and you're pain free, like Janice talked about, like if you're in pain um, and you keep exercising, I mean, kudos to you the pain that i had i couldn't walk yeah. during so and pain is your body's warning sign that something's not right so exactly that doesn't mean don't exercise but if it's really aggravating it 
you really should get it checked out and see what might be able to be done to help. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing about pregnancy in general is that I mean, it's kind of old older school advice, but we're as um fitness providers trying to help basically decrease the myth that you can't exercise while you're pregnant. So often the advice we get when we have discomfort during pregnancy is to rest, lay yeah. down. We do want you to rest. Don't get me wrong. You're growing another person or maybe more than one person. <laughs> <laughs> but what we want you to do is be able to live your life. And what we know, the only way that you can decrease your risk of pregnancy-related pelvic girdle pain is by being active. So if you maintain your exercise routine during your pregnancy, you're less likely to have this debilitating condition. So absolutely stay active unless you are having so much pain during your activity. And then you obviously, yeah. yeah, go that's, to your that's provider. Not functional. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And again, there might just be some simple interventions that can either like with the belt or some simple hands-on techniques that get you to the point where you can exercise with minimal to no pain. So yeah. that's a goal, but definitely exercise. ACOG has some great guidelines for exercise mm -hmm. during pregnancy. So I'll uh, post that in my story when we promote this video, um, and I'll post it today as well. But ACOG.org, they have great guidelines if you're well, not sure I, what to do or what's safe. When I tell my patients just in layman's terms, too, about pregnancy is basically a, you can maintain your same level of fitness during your pregnancy that you had prior. And you just want to avoid activities that could make you maybe fall down. Um, yeah, so like keep it, keep the baby safe. Exactly. So like skateboarding is snowboarding. one, snowboarding, <laughs> those kinds of things, um, just because they're worried about you falling on your belly. Um, so, but you can totally maintain your same level of fitness, um, throughout your pregnancy and it is so good for your delivery process, but it's also good for your postpartum recovery. So mm -hmm. I encourage that totally. Good. Okay. So do you have recommendations on how long a belt should be worn? So, and Janice, I'm sure you have something yeah. to it's, say it about depends. this. It depends, it depends, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So I will tell my p pregnant patients, the ones that I see really early in their pregnancy with pain, I'll say, you know, you and I are going to be buddies during your pregnancy, right? You're going to come in. I'm going to do some na nice manual techniques. You're going to wear the belt. And I recommend wearing the belt throughout your pregnancy, not all day, every day, because it can be uncomfortable and you don't need it all the time. Um, but basically the idea is that you'll wear it for relief of your symptoms and it's going to depend on how irritating your symptoms are. But often I'll tell people, you're probably going to want this belt by your side throughout your entire pregnancy. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, let's see. So we talked about pain running down the leg. Do you want to comment any more on that? What, so there's a, a question about what about pain running down my leg? could be yeah, multiple I, things. Exactly. So that's a, a big, I think often what we think about when we have pain running down our leg is a pinched nerve. And so often I'll hear my patients say, oh, I have a pinched nerve. But what we do know about the SI joint is that in studies where healthy people are basically seeing where the, the SI joint can refer, it can refer all the way down the leg in some people. So that's why it's really beneficial to go see a provider, a, a physical therapist, so they can do a differential diagnosis because we have skill set to be able to identify, is it the nerve that's irritated? Is it the joint? Um, and so if you're having those symptoms, it totally could be a pinched nerve or it could be the pregnancy-related pelvic girdle pain, and we have the skills to be able to identify which is which and we'll treat them a little differently. Mm -hmm. Good. So, like, here's the anatomy. This is the sacrum, and then mm -hmm. that's the tailbone. Here's your pelvis, and this right here is where your pelvis joins your sacrum, and that's called the sacroiliac joint. And then you have nerves. These little yellow plastic things are nerves. Mm -hmm. And you have nerves running down, and they connect to other nerves, and they branch, and it's it's an amazing. It's kind of like a tree. So, you mm -hmm. know, you have the trunk, and then it all spreads out. Well, all even right. that, the anatomy there, if you can put the sacrum back up, sure, you can yeah. see that the, the joint is right next to the nerves. 
So it could be that the joint is irritating the nerves. The nerves could be irritated. It could be both. Yeah. So it might not just like, be one thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So do pelvic floor muscle exercises help? pregnancy related pelvic girdle pain. I said it fast and I did. You did. <laughs> We're getting better. I'm getting so, better at the end. <laughs> so the idea with pelvic floor muscle exercise specifically with this condition is absolutely can be beneficial in when you utilize these muscles with your core because they're part of your core stabilizers, right? So I I specifically cue the pelvic floor and your abs when you're when we're working on stabilizing these joints. Um, so yes. And also what we know is that doing pelvic floor exercises during pregnancy is better for delivery and postpartum recovery. So that's kind of like a twofer, like, yeah. yes, I think yeah. you should do them to stabilize your joint. But also I think it's just like health and wellness. We should be doing pelvic floor muscle exercises. Exactly. When exactly. Very good. I love it. Uh, somebody, here's another question. If I tough it through during pregnancy, is that going to cause any permanent damage or future pain? No, I don't necessarily think that if you tough it through that you're going to cause any like long-term damage. Um, because I think a lot of women do exactly that. Right. Um, I think they just, they don't have any resources. Their providers don't know. Yeah, they don't know that they Mm -hmm. Exactly. Either there really is no access to help or they're, they don't have access to it. Exactly. And so um, I think that due to the quote unquote disease process of what it is, which is just increased instability of the joints, like that's going to go away when they're postpartum. They may long term have issues because their joints may continue to not be quite aligned. But I, I, I don't think my knee jerk is there's not yeah. going to be anything long-term damage that we're going to have to worry about. Right. Right. The only thing I would say would be like with nerve symptoms. So oh, if, true. It, but mm -hmm. that's not necessarily, you know, coming from the PRGP, it yeah. could be, but with nerve symptoms, if there is compression, then, yeah. and, and, some signs and symptoms of compression might be numbness or tingling or difficulty moving your leg. And if that's getting mm. worse or you're starting to not be able to feel your foot or not be able yeah. to move your foot, you know, that would be a warning sign that you shouldn't tough through that and make sure you get some intervention. That is totally true. Any kind of nerve irritation needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. Um, and, you know, honestly, we could talk for hours about the many different things that yeah. happen to yeah. the pregnant person. But nerve damage or nerve pain is very typical in this population as well. Yep. Yep. So in general, as long as as you're not getting worse and you're not having those nerve symptoms that, you know, just do the best that you can with the resources that you have and try exactly. to connect with the pelvic therapist and do some of these tips. There's a lot of resources that are coming out on different accounts about um, different, you know, like they're actually showing demonstrations about how to get in and out of a car. And maybe, maybe we can do another interview, but we really need to have a, a second person filming you. So maybe sometime if I'm in Austin, we can yeah. do a live one. <laughs> where you can demonstrate some of these things. That would be fun to do some I think that would be good. Mm -hmm. I actually have a friend who I'm thinking about doing pictures, but videos would be, I think, yeah. better. Yeah, so that's cool. So we'll have to figure something like yep. that out. Yep, We're just, it, everything is a trial and error, what works, what doesn't. And it's exciting to share information and to be able to help people. So that's why we're all here. Absolutely. And that's, mm -hmm. I mean, as someone who experienced it and someone who knows exactly what to do, it still was hard for me to get intervention. And I yeah. want to give a shout out to not only physical therapists, but also chiropractors can be really yeah. helpful in some it's cases. True. Um, but sometimes it's not a good fit. So you just have to figure out what resources you have in your area. But um, mm -hmm. it's debilitating. It's yep. terrible. Yep. And osteopaths, actually, too. So it's right. a, type, a doctor of osteopathy. So basically, people that are getting in there with their hands on their joints and that have that training uh, exactly. should be able to help this. Good. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that you would like to share with people before we wrap it up? Hmm. Or parting words? Parting words would just be what we were talking about before, which is like, you don't have to be in pain if you know a friend or if you had a previous pregnancy where you were in a lot of pain, like keep this in your back pocket. Like 
You don't have to be in pain. You don't have to be miserable. You can choose to work or continue to if, if you want to. And pain shouldn't be the limiting factor there. Right. And you may have to advocate for yourself, which is unfortunate. But, you know, just like Janice said, our providers are learning about what resources are available just like you are. So you yeah. could be helpful yeah. to this to provider's other people, future yeah. patients. Exactly. exactly. Think yeah. of all the people that you could impact. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So if everyone is an advocate for pelvic health awareness within their sphere, it's a ripple effect, right? And we mm -hmm. have more and more increase. And that's really what's happening with social media. More and more and more people. Are, it's exciting. Totally. It yeah. is. Uh -huh. Well, Adrian, thank you so much for joining and, and for this idea. I love it. Everybody there, thank you for joining us. This is going to be live on my story for 24 hours, and then it will be on our YouTube channel, My Pelvic Floor Muscles, No Spaces. We have a lot of other great expert interviews on there that you can find a lot of great information to do self-help or also help your patients. So everybody take care, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.